Can you give me more specifically how much and for who? Okay, now the, uh, I think that is a good move, but not enough. Uh, not enough. Uh, I think we should uh, give more adequate, uh, more adequate. Uh, one good way is actually to differentiate the housing grant for first-time buyers. Uh, that's the, that's a more adequate, and the amount must be more than three thousand, uh, because if you serve two years of national service. Yes, you do receive an allowance, uh, but then uh, the same person who doesn't do national service go out to work uh, uh, can earn much more. Eh? So I think we should give people uh, adequate uh, compensation. Uh, and we should uh, not take 25 years. Uh, I think I raised the issue 25 years ago. We should not take 25 years. And uh, I know... Among the journalists here, you are all girls. Uh, wouldn't you want to have uh, your boyfriend from your school um, more ready to uh, marry you instead of waiting another two, three more years? Uh, so I think it's causing the kind of uh, disruption. So with regards to Now, the spirit of national service must apply to everybody. Uh, males, females, citizens, permanent residents. And it's not uh, fair uh, to just have the burden uh, carried by one section who then have to compete for jobs with the others who do not have the liability. So I think uh, the, sp the spirit of national service should be... Uh, more fairly shared. Besides the NS issue uh, and, and, and the forming of the presidential personal council, these are very specific policy issues that you're looking at. Uh, and you're saying that you're going to, be, uh, have, to have a bigger voice in respecting your elected president. Uh, besides a big, bigger voice, do you foresee yourself uh, being able to take action or uh, having the solutions to those? Now, in solving a problem, the first and very important step is to recognize we have a problem. If we don't recognize we have a problem, if we disagree, uh, then you can never uh, find a solution because you keep arguing uh, do we have a problem? Is this a problem? One example is cost of HDB flat. The former Minister for National Development says HDB flats are affordable. Uh, if he doesn't recognize that it is a problem, people can't afford this, nothing will be done. Then suddenly after the election, the minister is changed. And the new minister says, uh, I will bring down the cost of HDB flats. Now, why should the future of a country be just dependent upon the views of one person? Why can't uh, we have for this kind of issue um, more active discussion of, of the people who are involved? Not just of property developers, not just of HDB, who is the government, who is selling the flat at high prices. Why can't we have the views of, uh, of the people who have to pay for the HDB flats? Why can't they be discussed in a more, uh, more, uh, uh, um, a, a more sensible way? Now, therefore, uh, being the voice of the people brings this very important step in recognizing a problem. If I can get uh, people who are affected to come and say, yes, uh, it is uh, 
a problem. Housing prices are too high. Uh, and then I could get uh, uh, experts who study this and present into a panel who give their vote, like a mini referendum. It can be very strong. This is not just one person's opinion. doesn't matter. This is not just the president's opinion or the minister for national development's opinion. It's the opinion of a large group of people representing a larger group of people. This is what democratic democracy is about. There is the view of a larger group of people. Okay. Now, generally, uh, if you have a decision made by a group of 50 to 100 people, you are likely to get a decision that is representing a large, most of the population. Uh, this is someone wrote a book called The uh, Wisdom of the Crowd. You ask 100 people to make a guess, they are, the average of all their guesses is likely to be close to the truth. Uh, now, this is a fundamental uh, 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 key difference between decisions made by a small number of people who are scholars and elite and decisions made by large numbers of people uh, who are the ordinary people. And I think we need to balance them out. I get the impression that we are talk, you know, we're talking in the context of a general election rather than an election for our president to you know, respect powers. In fact, you know, I mean, what you're supposed to do is mainly to check. But what you're talking about is you know, like, like, you know, the change and extend, extend the, you know, the power of the president. That means you don't agree with the Constitution's... Uh, Now, the label about a general election and a presidential election is also a label that is created uh, to uh, constrain thinking. Uh, so we are now told uh, a, a president election has to be something else. Uh, now, I'm talking about uh, the welfare of the people, the future of our country. And I think the president, elected by the people, uh, can play a role. Uh, but we still will play a role within the constitution. Now, the constitution requires uh, the president to do certain things. Uh, but it doesn't stop the president from understanding the aspirations of the people and bringing them to the government. There's nothing in the constitution that says this cannot be done. I believe this is what will make the president valuable to the people. Uh, given that some of these issues I'm talking about are close to your heart, why, why didn't you run for GE? Why PE instead? I believe uh, the president's office and is being elected by the country uh, can give... Uh, can give uh, greater influence uh, compared with just being uh, a member of parliament, one out of 90. Uh, so I believe it's, it's going to have a greater influence. And I also believe that uh, this influence is positive and constructive. Uh, and I also believe that uh, the prime minister has said that he will respect whoever the people choose and he will be constructive. And if these are issues important to the people, and the Prime Minister recognised that, uh, he apologised for the failings of his government in several key areas. He reiterated that uh, in the National Day Rally. These are the important things to be done. Uh, but how is it to be done? Uh, if we carry out the old way of decision-making uh, by the existing mechanism, what's the existing mechanism? The ministry, the civil servant, the minister working in that way, I think we are going to find it difficult to solve the problem. But if we bring in the inputs of the people uh, through the voice of the people, 
uh, I believe that there could be a chance of looking at this problem in a different way, uh, in a new perspective. Uh, let me remind everybody, the problem of declining birth rates in Singapore was identified in 1985. Over the years, we introduced baby bonus one, baby bonus two, incentive for childbirth here and there. Did we find, did we solve the problem? We did not. The birth rate become worse and worse. Now, if you carry on in the same way, using the same strategy, uh, you will find it didn't work before. Why would it work now? That's why it's important to bring in in order to change a new perspective. Now, Prime Minister Lee thinks that by putting in new ministers, uh, it will make that change. It has to be more than that. The minister is not a one-man show. He's got a ministry. He's got the people below him. And if they carry on the old mindset, the change will be difficult. So I hope that uh, what I bring uh, to be the voice of the people can be a useful input, can be a, a chance to have a different look at it. Now, let me say the new method that I propose is not going to work like magic. It requires also uh, time to get it to work. So, uh, but at least we are not trying the old method. Right. Uh, yes. Thank you. Thank you.